Bible study, Jane said, you need to read this. I love to read, so I read it. Now we'll read it to you. Not everybody who looks Christian is Christian. Don't ever forget that. They think they're new. They're not new. This has been going on since the beginning of time. Let me read it, and then you'll hear my rebuttal. By the way, I believe Jesus Christ is who he says he is. I believe I can prove it. That's why Satan doesn't allow a lot of folks to argue with me, because I will put them in their place just as fast as it comes out of their mouth. Not because of anything I know, but it's because what God gives to me to know. It's important to be able to defend the faith. You should have what's called an elevator faith. In other words, the time it takes to ride in a New York City elevator from the top to the bottom is normally about 40 seconds. You should be able to share with somebody within 30 to 40 seconds why you believe what you believe and who it is you believe. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So I won't say the guy's name. It's a guy who's a pastor. Doctor. Pastor. That's, you know... A lot of initials, PhD, piled higher and deeper. That's what PhD stands for. I often get frustrated with Christians. There's your first problem. Who try to witness without really understanding their own faith or the ramifications of what they try to communicate. I find it even more ironic, however, when I have conversations with declared atheists who cannot fathom that a Christian could be something other than a biblical literist, partly because of the kind of Christianity to which they have been exposed. I take the Bible very seriously, but I understand it too well to take it all literally. After I threw up, I came back. It is a compilation of many literary genres, many we would not recognize in the world of Western literature. There are words for some of them like theological polemic, but I have not met many people who understand what they actually means. The first Christian, I can't read it, I just can't. So, let me give you the nutshell. This person has achieved higher education. They have learned that this book that I adore, knowing that people died to get me this, they just don't believe it. They believe some of it. Now, I don't know where in here it says you can pick and choose your favorite parts. 50% of this book, I don't agree with. I don't. But all of it, I'm 100% on board. I don't have to agree with the way lights work, as long as they work. I don't have to agree with the Lord. He said I don't. But I'm on board because I know he's right and I know he's true. And I know this book, 66 books written by 40 different people over 1,500 years, is one integrated message system from outside our time domain. How can you prove that? Because it's never been wrong. Never. It's never been wrong. What is truth? That's the name of the message. Does that word ring a bell? What is truth? Does anybody remember who said that? What is truth? Remember Jesus was standing in front of Pontius Pilate? Pilate was the procreator. He was the guy who was in charge. He had lied his way all through life and got his position. Sounds like our government. They lie, they lie, they lie. It was told that it was safer to be a dog in his house than a family member. He had his wife killed. He had his kids killed. He had people all around him killed. Why? Because they don't want to give up that power. Sound familiar? Okay. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. It's all the same. If I sound fired up, it's because I am. And I'm sorry, but you need to know what truth is. And if it hasn't been preached from this pulpit, then kick me out. But I'm telling you, I will never preach anything but this word as long as I'm here. Because this is truth. And I can prove it to you. Okay. John 18, 38. After all this lying, here he is standing in front of truth. He's standing in front of the one. He's standing in front of God Almighty. And he looks Jesus Christ in the faith and says, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find no fault in him. Now I did a whole 
series on how Pilate is saved. I can prove it by what he said, how he went through the steps. Don't be surprised if you get to heaven and you walk down the street, there's Pilate. Don't be surprised. And don't be surprised if people who you think are saved are not there. And you go knock on the door that was reserved for them and they're not there. Don't be surprised. So when I went through the police academy, my favorite day was money. Counterfeit money day, where you learn about counterfeit money. Where you say, well, man, that must have been fun. Yeah, it's a four-hour class where they bring in lots of money. Now, I thought they would bring in lots of counterfeit money, but they didn't. They brought in real money. Why? Because if you know everything there is to know about real money, you can spot a fake in a second. Why do I study this book? Why have I studied and studied and studied and studied so that I will know a fake when I see it? It doesn't take but a second. Jesus Christ didn't walk up and coddle anybody, especially the leaders. He knew they should know the truth, and he held them accountable, and we're going to see that. By the way, in this hogwash, that's Greek for BS, this, he says how he is educated and has found his way, okay? Romans 1.22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You're going to be a fool for somebody. You just are. Be a fool for the right reason. Nobody in their right mind is going to die for something they do not believe in. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Psalm 14.1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's why if you sit down and try to have a conversation, it doesn't work up here. It doesn't. It works in here. It doesn't matter how smart you are. I'm not smart at all. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be digging ditches. I am not smart, but what I am is wise because I understand this to be the truth. So, John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, said, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage, which is a lie. They were in servitude many times. To any man, how sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If Jesus takes away your sin, you are no longer bound to that sin. Is everybody with me so far? Chuck Swindoll, one of my all-time favorites. Somebody asked him, Chuck, with all that great name, by the way, Chuck, with all that wisdom, with all that understanding, why do people sin? He said, because they want to. Do you understand the difference between a sinner and a non-sinner? When you are saved, you're considered to be a non-sinner. I, I still sin. Ask her. I still sin. The difference is I have somewhere to take it. That's the difference. And I am worse off now because when before I knew Christ and I sinned, it was because I had to. Now when I sin, it's because I want to. There's a difference. And you have to work yourself out with Christ. But that's not the point of this. Simply put, to prove the Bible is true, all we need to do is prove that he is who he says he is. Because if he is who he says he is, then this is 100% correct. If he's not who he says he is, then it's not correct. Would everybody agree? Isn't that like a Sudoku puzzle? You sort of go through the reasoning and you figure it out. If I told you, everybody here is old enough, if I told you one afternoon in November of 63, while riding in a motorcade through Dealey Plaza, President Kennedy was shot with a bow and arrow, would you believe me? No. Why? Because there's been too much evidence. To the that evidence came from where? Witnesses. You understand? 
witnesses proved that he got shot. They were there. They saw it. Right? The one thing about folks that drives me nuts, the educated group, well, we can't use this as a witness. These are 66 different compilations. Do you understand? The New Testament was written within a 40-year period, directly after seeing Christ. But we, we're not allowed to accept those as witnesses. Not a problem. Just happen to have some others. Okay, by the way, this is my copy. Jesus. Follow this. Let's look at Jesus from outside the Bible. Now, I know that sounds funny. Your church is supposed to be preaching from the Bible. We will. We'll go back and forth. But you need to understand the early. See, we think we've arrived. If you think we've arrived, looking around at your streets, and you tell me we've arrived, we haven't arrived. Your education has made the place worse. Why do you think they're moving from up north to come down here and make this just as nasty as it is up there? Because they made it nasty and they figured they'd come down here where it's nice. But they're still going to bring their ideas with them. Why? Because they're not based in this. This is what you should be based in. So, Polycarp. If you've never heard some of these names, it's okay. I have only because I study. But I, these guys were real people. Okay, Polycarp. He was a disciple of John. So, if he was a disciple of John, he's firsthand. You understand? He was there. He was the bishop to Smyrna. He lived from 69 to 155 AD. Just to give you an idea. Remember, Jesus was crucified in 32 AD. Okay? Well, John died in 90 something AD on the Isle of Patmos. Some of the disciples died early on, some of them had a little bit of a career and they died. John was the only one that wasn't martyred. They tried to martyr him, but he ended up dying of old age on the Isle of Patmos, which was no picnic. Polycarp said in one of his writings, Now may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal high priest himself, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, build you up in faith and truth, and to us with you and to all those under heaven who will yet believe in our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and his Father who raised him from the dead. That is outside of the Bible. Ignatius, he was a disciple of John. And he was the bishop of the church at Antioch. Antioch, Smyrna. <laughs> All these names are names that you should know simply by, even if you read Revelation, those churches, okay? Quote, For our God, Jesus the Christ, was conceived by Mary according to God's plan, both from the seed of David and of the Holy Spirit. By the way, this is, all quotes I could have chosen from. Justin Martyr, Melito of Sardis, Irenaeus of Lyons, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Hippolytus of Rome, Origen, and so many more of their accounts, first-hand and second-hand accounts. But we're not allowed to count them. Why? Why are we taking the word of some idiot that stands up in the courtroom, raises their hand and swears in front of God they're going to tell the truth, and then they lie? Why are we supposed to take that as truth? But we can't take the truth of the people who are under the stress of they're going to die if they say this, and they still said it. I'm more of a tendency to believe that guy. You know, it's like the deathbed confession thing. I'm more in line to, so what about the earliest sources? Not just the people. What about the sources that were written? The works of Josephus. This is my favorite. This, was, this is an 1800-something copy. I don't read it because I don't want the pages to mess up. But I wanted to show you. These are things you can get. Your, look, you got to keep these things always to read and understand those people who came before you. Don't ever forget who came before you. Flavius Josephus was a first century Jewish Roman scholar historian born in Jerusalem. So he was Jewish, but a Roman citizen. Sounds something like Paul, don't it? Okay. First century means what? That he was there writing before the end of the first century. John died at the end of the first century. They were all contemporaries. He wrote. He wrote all of this. Antiquities of the Jews and history of Jewish wars. This is what he wrote. 
I'll just give you a piece here and then a piece later. At this time, there was a wise man who was called Jesus, and his conduct was good, and he was known to be virtuous. By the way, he was Jewish. He was not a Christian, this guy. And many people from among the Jews and other nations became his disciples. Pilate condemned him to be crucified and to die. And those who had become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship. They reported that he appeared to them after his crucifixion and that he was alive. Accordingly, he was perhaps the Messiah concerning whom the prophets have recounted wonders. Well, we can't accept that. Why? Why? The man wrote this stuff and it was okay until about 1960 something. I think if you correlate, that's about when God was taken out of the public school. I did a thing for one of my Bible study classes, and you could see America doing this until the world's most hated woman decided she didn't want God in school. And the crime and everything else was right here. And in 1963, what do you think happened when God was taken out of school? Go look. Don't take my word for it. It isn't me that's doing this. Don't shoot the messenger, as they say. I'm simply bringing you what you need to know as a Christian. You need to understand who you are, where you've come from, and what to look forward to. Okay? The Babylonian Talmud, that is what the Jewish people use as a second book outside of the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch to them is our what we call the first five books of here, Moses' writings. They venerated Moses. Moses was their guy. Moses represented the law. Anyways, in the Sanhedrin 43a, it recounts how Jesus led many astray. Quote, but not having found anything in his favor. And then he goes through and it says, he is going to be stoned because he practiced sorcery. Why did I put that in there? When you look at somebody who practices sorcery, you have to admit they have something supernatural. The Babylonian Talmud is a, they're, they're, they're justifying the fact or they're, they're identifying the fact that Jesus Christ had supernatural power. That's what they're writing. Of course he did. He walked on water. He rose from the dead. He, he, he healed people. Not like Benny Hinn does. Sorry I mentioned the name with the, the jacket and they all fall down. Come on, man. Pliny the Younger. I'm sorry, but that's a cool name, Pliny. This was a real guy, and he was not saved. Listen, the Roman governor of Bithynia, uh, and he, he uh, wrote to Emperor Trajan. He wrote this around 112 AD. While asking for counsel on how to deal with Christians. See, they were growing. They were growing. See, the more they were persecuted, the more they grew. Go look at northern Korea. Go look at Iran. Go look at Iraq. Go look at Pakistan. Go look at China. Those churches are growing faster than we ever dreamed of over here. Why? Because it's too easy over here. It has no value. In my business, every time I do something for somebody free because I'm trying to be nice, they don't see a value in it. Everybody with me? If I charge them way too much, they love it. While asking the council about so he remarks how they, quote, sing responsibly a hymn to Christ, as to a God. They're acknowledging that first century, they're acknowledging that Jesus Christ was as a God. Let's keep going. Mara Bar Serapion, born in 50 AD. Now Jesus just died 18 years before this. So this guy's a contemporary. He's right there. He was a Syriac Stoic philosopher. So he was not a Christian. See, philosophy is that thing where they figure out they can they're smart enough. By the way, I'm sorry, but Thales invented philosophy. And of course, his student was Socrates, and you can go down Thales. That's like when you're in Charlotte, you see Thales Academy. They think they're smart, so we better you know, start with philosophy. Thales was our guy, so we named it the Thales Academy. Is everybody with me? And it's interesting to me that God took a guy who was a fisherman and had no education whatsoever, and he debated the philosophers of the time. See, the philosophy said that we come from the Lagos. We are coming from the written word. See, in the Greek, Lagos isn't just a spoken word. It also has to do with knowledge. It's a very complicated word. So John said, cool, you're right. We did come from the Lagos. 
In the beginning was the Lagos, and the Lagos was with God, and the Lagos was God. Here you got a fisherman that is basically telling you, you're right. You're just on the wrong path of what that Lagos is. A fisherman who knew nothing about that stuff. God gave it to him. But see, once you're educated, you get out of that. See, that can't be true. No, it can't be true to you because your mind can't think like that. If God was small enough to fit in your eight pound brain, he wouldn't be worth worshiping. Don't ever forget that. It really sounds like I'm angry. I am. I should read the rest of this to you. You throw up. This is a pastor who this Sunday is preaching not too far from here. And I bet his place is full. And you're, you're thinking that in two years the Methodists aren't going to have money? No, 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 no. They'll fill up with people like this. They'll have plenty of money. They're not worried about you. They're not worried about this. The more you leave, those churches fill up with people that they're indoctrinating in schools. That's what's happening. This guy wrote to his son. His, believe it or not, his, his most famous writing was a letter to his son. Quote, wise king of the Jews, Tacitus, Publius Cornelius Tacitus. They got some cool names. He was a senator and a historian who lived in the first century. In his annals, 15.44, Christus, the founder of the name, was put to death by Pontius Pilate, procreator of Judea in the reigning of Tiberius. So, well, Jesus, the only place you have anywhere where he was crucified was in here. That's not true. They know it's not true. They hide things from you. Why? Because then it doesn't, it doesn't fit the narrative. Okay? Josephus. Let's go back to Josephus. Well, I think I'm wearing this out. Is everybody with me so far? You understand. I don't have to go through all these. Y'all understand. I'm going to maybe one more. I can't say it. Suetonius, he lived from 70 to 160 AD. In his biography of Nero, this guy was not a Christian. He was writing the biography of Nero. He was employed by Nero, that Nero, the guy who burned Rome and then blamed the Christians so that they would be punished. And they were. Punishment was inflicted on the Christians, a class of men given to a new and mischievous superstition, the resurrection. It was a superstition. It was he raised from the dead. Do you understand? This stuff was written at the day. It was like you picking up a newspaper back then and you seeing what this guy wrote. Because if you bought the Nero biography, which was probably the latest, greatest thing on Barnes and Nobles, there it was. It's a superstition that this guy raised from the dead. It was believed back then that he was raised from the dead by a guy who was a non-Christian. But we're not allowed to say that because we're not educated. We don't have to be educated. You let this guy do the speaking for you. You don't have to be educated. I pride myself on being dumb and not having to make decisions. Why? Because I let him make the decisions and then he'll be responsible for the outcome. I let him make decisions. I used to make decisions, didn't I? I made bad ones, bad decisions. I don't make them, I just don't. Because if it's something major, he's gonna make the decision for me. And he will block if things aren't going the way they're supposed to. I promise you he will. Lastly, you know, let me go back to Pliny the Younger. Listen to what he wrote in 60-something A.D. I have never been present at an examination of Christians. Consequently, I do not know the nature of the extent of the punishments usually meted out to them. So he's simply verifying they were getting trashed everywhere, okay? Sound like today, other than this country. Not the grounds for starting an investigation on how far it should be pressed. They also declared that the sum total of their guilt or error accounted to no more than this. They had met regularly before dawn on a fixed day, Sunday, in remembrance of Jesus' resurrection, to chant verses alternately amongst themselves in honor of Christ as if to a God. Why can't we use them as witnesses? They were there. This guy lives 2,000 years after the fact and only has the educational material that's given to him by people who want him to think a certain way. Of course he thinks that way. I'm not blaming him. What we're, we were, we're afraid to go back and understand this is the truth. 
We are. We're afraid to do that because we got to fit in. You ain't got to fit in nowhere. Jesus didn't fit in. He was God. He didn't have to fit in anywhere. Lastly, while most skeptics of the Bible will discount the Bible, I want to give you one example, just one, of prophecy and why it's impossible for it to be anything other than the truth, okay? And I, on my website, I have an article where I broke it all down and made it easy, but I'm just going to sort of put it in a nutshell. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore, this is Gabriel giving it to Daniel, okay? Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem and the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. Now, me and you, we read that at six in the morning because we're trying to get some chapters done before we go to work. We're going, what the heck is he talking about? To make it easy for you, a week of years just simply means seven years. A week of years. That's Jewish. Remember, we don't, we don't worship a Western God. We worship an Eastern God. He's formulated around Eastern, so we have to start thinking like a Hebrew the way it was written. Okay? The prophecy is mathematical in nature. Gabriel is letting Daniel know the exact day that Jesus Christ would ride into town on a donkey. So if he's given him that prophecy, then all we have to know is when was the edict to go rebuild and when did he ride into town on a donkey? Because he's saying the Messiah, the king. When was that? Remember, they came to Jesus over and over and said, we want to make you king. We want to make you king. And what did he do? No, my time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. There was one time where not only did he approve it, he arranged it. Remember, y'all go get the donkey. If the guy says anything, just tell him if the Lord needs him. And again, of course, the guy says, hey, what y'all doing with my donkey? And he says, well, I, I, you know, the Lord needs him. So, oh, okay, go ahead and take him. By the way, as we talked about before, the conquering king comes on a horse. The family, or you inherit this, you ride on a donkey. That's why Jesus had to ride on a donkey. But when you see him in Revelation, what is he riding? A big white horse. We saw one coming this way. They scared me to death, y'all. That horse was he was big. Can I just picture Jesus Christ sitting on one of them things riding, man? That's the conquering Messiah. But listen to this. You can do all your research you want to do. I wish this guy would look. Artaxerxes, Longimanus. Well, I've never heard that name. Well, when you go to the book of Esther, his father was Artaxerxes I, but they use a different name in there because it's Hebrew translated to Latin. Anyways, this guy gave the order, and you can do your research. It's there. It's plain public history that on March 14th of 445 B.C., he gave the edict, go, rebuild. So now you have the starting point, right? Now you have the starting point. Well, research also will tell you that on April 6th of 32 AD, because a week later he rose from the dead, April 6th, 32 AD, Jesus Christ rides into town on a donkey. So now you have the two dates. Why is that important? Well, if you take 69 weeks of years, that's 390 years. How many days is that on a 360 day year? 173,880 days. So if you do the math and you factor for 118 leap years to the day that they said he's going to ride into town on a donkey from that date, Jesus Christ rode into town on a donkey on that date. Margin of error, zero. Margin of error, zero. There was no error. No error whatsoever. How do you know that's such a big deal? Because he's riding into town on the donkey. He comes up over the hill. Does anybody remember what he does? He starts weeping for Jerusalem. And he holds the leaders accountable. I wrote the scripture. Luke 19, 40, uh, Luke 19 41 through 44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. 
saying, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now are hid from thine eyes. He declares judicial blindness over them. Follow me. For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. That was 70 AD. The dark spot of Israel's history. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Why? Why would you allow this? Why? You ready? Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. He held the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, he held them all accountable for knowing that prophecy. And when you go to Paul, he says, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, then judicial blindness will be uh, removed. And in Hosea 5.15, he says, I go into my place and return to my place until they will call upon my name. Who? The Jews. Why do you think? Haman, why do you think Hitler, you go to big H's, you want to go why they constantly are trying to do away with the Jews so that they won't call upon his name? Because when that Messiah comes back, he's not the suffering Messiah anymore. You want to know exactly who Jesus Christ is? Read the book of Revelation. That cat's not in a good mood at that point. He's not in a good mood. If they are held accountable for knowing the time of his visitation, and they are judged for it. Not just them, everybody. This guy, that I'm sorry, I threw his paper over there. He's going to be held accountable. You and I are going to be held accountable for knowing what's in here. We are. We take it lightly because we've never been up against it. Our defecation, which hits the rotating oscillator, hasn't happened yet. But it's here. I promise you, Everything in this book has come true to this point. And if there are one prophecy for Jesus Christ's first coming, I can tell you as a fact, there are eight prophecies for his second coming. This is real. This is coming, and it's here. That's why guys like that don't want it to happen. See, if you admit that there's a God, then you have to admit that everything changes. If you admit that there's sin then you have to admit that you sin. And if you admit that you sin, that's a big deal. And we have to change who we are. God doesn't want you to change who you are. He made you that way. What he wants is for you to climb on board with what he's done because he knows it works. I'm sorry, but that stuff right there, that fires me up because it's everywhere. And very rarely do I get to be like in front of it. I looked this guy up. All I can tell you is this. Jesus Christ ain't losing one night's sleep over this guy at all. Neither should you. It doesn't matter what they do around you. Because no matter how dark, no matter how evil you think it is, it's worse. So don't worry about it. If you trust that he is who he says he is, then just rest in the fact that he's got your back. If you don't, see me after class and we'll get it straight. But I promise you, this is not going away, and he will return. And when he does, he's going to return for those who love him and who are looking for him. The second coming is different than the rapture. The rapture is to get the ones who love him. The second coming, that's when he comes back and he's a little angry. So...